Uh, hi. I'm about to play through the entirety of Twisted Metal Head On, and you're welcome to join me. I've done this before with Twisted Metal Black, and uh, it was pretty successful, so I'm going to milk it for all it's worth. Or find out if that was just a fluke. This is another game that I've done a full, thorough, heavily edited Let's Play of. It's actually the fourth Twisted Metal game that I Let's Played. But it's the second game that I'm revisiting because it was the second Twisted Metal game that I ever played. It's been a short while since the last time I played this game. Since then, I've started playing Twisted Metal 3 for the first time. Started doing a Let's Play of that, and uh, if you've seen the opening cutscene of Twisted Metal 3, this is gonna look familiar. This weird cell shaded art style? They ripped it off from the Twisted Metal 3 intro. I realize on revisit that uh, a lot of this game is intentionally ripped off from Twisted Metal 3 in an attempt to both erase it from canon and replace it as the better follow-up to Twisted Metal 2. Now they have seven additional years worth of uh, development time compared to Twisted Metal 3. TM3 came out in 98. This game first was released in 2005. So, Incognito was cheating. They also had a whole console generation on the developers of TM3. This is a very rude move on their part. But, uh, what the hell, they did a good job. It was ill-intentioned, but the results speak for themselves. So, let's get into Twisted Metal Head-On, the Extra Twisted Edition for the Sony PlayStation 2. That's why it was the second uh, Twisted Metal game I ever played. Because I had a PS2, and my PS2 is actually messed up such that the uh, backwards compatibility to the PS1 games that it is meant to have uh, doesn't work. So I only ever played PS2 games on that console. And I am playing a PS2 game on that console right now. I'm going to play as Shadow. When I did this LP, I was ridiculously thorough. I frankly did the best job I possibly could. I don't really need to revisit this game. I'm just sort of milking it for content because I don't have the means to do anything better right now. I'm experiencing technical difficulties and uh, personal difficulties. But uh, if any character in the original LP was underserved, it was Shadow. I only used it to play against a single boss fight. Couldn't even really see the upgraded special or whatever. Uh, this opening cutscene, you have to enjoy new metal band level. Very short-lived short lived band. And we could murder them, as I demonstrated in the LP. I might let them live. I might be magnanimous in that way. Fun thing, uh, if you skip that cutscene, which it is very easy to do, accidentally even, just tap any button and you skip the cutscene. Uh, but if you do that, um, level doesn't play at all. They just gyrate on stage while generic uh, stage music plays. And you miss out on this wonderful song of theirs. Disaster Proof. Song about relationships tearing your heart up because New Metal was a very, uh, we, we would call it emo these days. We called it emo at the time, quite frankly. Even though emo is a very different thing. Shadow, of course, it's, it's a hearse, I mean. And I'm quite the edgelord. Gotta just admit it at this point. And, uh... If I weren't such a big nerd for uh, Mr. Grimm, obviously Shadow would be my favorite car. Even though it's only available in a limited number of Twisted Metal games. It uh, kicks a lot of ass in those games. 
Helen. It's an introductory game, plus the Metal 2. It's one of the single best cars in that entire game. Like, it's ridiculously powerful. Nice thing, uh, in this game, Shadow Special can't hurt the vehicle, and thus, we can fire it at point blank. Probably gonna do that a lot, because enemies love to pile up on ya. I'm gonna run for the full health. No one has even gone into this back area yet. But, uh... Like I said, this is a bit unnecessary. I was uh, overly thorough in the original Let's Play of this game. So if you want to see things like the minigame, go watch that LP. Definitely not going to play all the minigames in this revisit. They are a bit tedious, particularly this first one. Outlaw using shield technology that I don't know that it should have. Ooh, we're gonna get to see the upgrade system in its full glory. Whatever glory there is there. Uh, where are... Everyone's piled up in the arena here, might as well use our environmentals. Scroll forever to get to the swarm missiles. Because they're very powerful. Yep. Killed Axel, pretty much outright. I never showed this off in the LP, but you can go underneath the bleachers. There's supposed to be a health refill there. A small health refill. I've already collected it, apparently. Accidentally dropped a mine. That's fine. I underutilize the uh, energy meter in all Twisted Metal games. Frankly, I find it to be a rather annoying feature. Oh, got me with the uh, remote bomb. So we're gonna get to see another thing that I talked about in the LP but was not able to show off. Which is that when you uh, lose a life, it does not regenerate when you move on to the next level. At least that is what my thorough testing proved when I did the LP. Let's find out. Yes. If you look above my health bar, I have one car symbol there representing extra lives. As Twisted Metal games go, this one is fairly easy, specifically the uh, Extra Twisted Edition. They changed damage values and health values in a way that allows you, the player, to uh, do a lot of cheap tactics, which will be much more effective than they ought to be. Frankly, they screwed up the balance that they set up in the PSP version of the game. And in doing so, made the game more fun, in my opinion. I played quite a bit of the PSP version, so as to show off version differences. And, uh... The PSP version can be very tedious. Not always, if you pick the right vehicle and the right level. It's a lot of fun, but, uh, sometimes... It is... fun. because I died right at the end of the last level. I only have one upgrade at the moment. It's the jump upgrade, I think. Hmm, my jump's kind of pathetic. So maybe not, but uh, I should have the jump upgrade. In my personal opinion, I don't know if the game agrees with me. Sometimes these games just don't agree with me. Yeah, that's definitely an upgraded jump. The unupgraded jump is nothing. You, like, do a tiny little pathetic hop.
got Sweet Tooth here. Sweet Tooth is actually not totally broken, unlike in many other Twisted Metal games, where Sweet Tooth is by far the best character. Here he is merely good. The equal differences in this game are kind of insignificant overall. Because health values aren't going to help you that much. Damage values are simply too damn high. You're gonna die a lot. No matter how high your armor is. Special weapons are, for the most part, nothing special. Uh, ironically. Poor choice of words, but uh, yeah, most of them aren't really gonna impress too many people. So, for the most part, it comes down to personal preference what style of vehicle you want to play as. You're gonna fare pretty well regardless. Um, I accidentally zoomed in. Forgot that's how that happened. You hold the triangle button and um, press forward or backward on the D-pad. Do want those power missiles because they are fairly powerful. Um, that's Hammerhead knew I wanted them. What a dick. I had a test playthrough of this level once where um, those uh, construction vehicles, every time I shot one or rammed one, it fell through the ground. And I wanted to show that off on recording at some point but I've never been able to replicate it. So, that's unfortunate. I can show off the Wilhelm scream. It's very, very quiet. But when you run over construction workers, they Wilhelm scream. I enjoy it quite a bit. Quite a lot of restraint to actually, uh, use a subtle Wilhelm scream instead of a blaring one now that everyone is in on the meme. Film producers have made it incredibly annoying. They want everyone to hear their inside joke that is no longer inside to anybody. And they've switched our music to the boring title screen music from the PSP version. I mean, I like how chill it is. It doesn't really suit our combat. I don't remember. Oh, right, the uh, the generator with the lightning bolts. I forgot what the environmental attack was briefly, which means it is useless in most circumstances. I honestly expected Sweet Tooth to survive that. And all that remains is uh, the guy who killed me last time with a remote bomb trying to repeat the process. I haven't even gone to the upper level yet. I intended to blow up the uh, LA Wood sign. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Homing missiles should wrap this sucker up. Just one of them. There we go. Get his upgrade point. And get out of here. I am going to save. And uh, quit out to the main menu. And reload the game, because doing that will restore me to full lives. I assume it is a glitch or a programming oversight or something. Because it only exists in this port of the game. And it's so easy to bypass, yet irritating to do so. And we got our level select. Very important one. Um, in the next Twisted Metal video I do, it'll be a Twisted Metal 3 video, and it will feature the Egypt level. So let's get a little refresher 
on what the uh, head-on version of Egypt looks like. What Incognito Entertainment thought was the better version of Egypt. I have played the Twisted Metal 3 version, but not in quite some time. So, I honestly don't know which one's better. I have a strong feeling it is this one, though. Twisted Metal 3 uh, doesn't have very many good levels in it. The levels are the greatest weakness in that game. Whereas in this game, most of the levels are quite good. Napalms will hit the vehicle that fires them, but they always do max damage no matter who they hit. Whether it's you or the enemy, max damage every time. We might be early enough to show off something that I couldn't show off in the LP, because the enemy vehicles got to it first. Here in the secret underground tunnels that connect all three of the pyramids is the full health refill. There it is. Mine. Last time the enemies had grabbed it. Uh, kill Horus for no reason. Doesn't look good. And, like, the statue does look good, so I like to let it live. But, you know... We can survive its absence. And we must do so at this point, because it's gone. I think that was a remote bomb. Usually the remote bombs are the only thing that have powerful enough blasts to uh, send me on my side like that. Yeah, napalms only do 20 damage, but they do 20 damage every time they hit, so... Pretty significant. In the PSP version, they often do very little damage because you actually have to get a bullseye to get 20 points. And that is quite difficult. Machine gun upgrade, I forget what number upgrade that is. How far we are from uh, getting the health upgrade, which will greatly increase the hardiness of Shadow. But it does give us some use for our machine gun. It's not quite as powerful as, like, the Mega Guns from the Twisted Metal remake, or even the uh, machine gun upgrade from Twisted Metal Black. But it is definitely notable. This swarm should finish off. There we go. That was all contingent on how good the homing was. Because most of those were going to hit the wall. I think 27 is max damage for the, the swarm missiles too, so... Nice. Super easy to use the Swarm Missiles. Just ease of use is why this game is so much easier than most other Twisted Metals. I'm um, not sure why there's no music. Never had that happen before in any of my playthroughs. Let's just enjoy the violence, to paraphrase, uh, uh, honestly I don't know the band, I've only ever heard covers of Enjoy the Silence. <laughs> That's embarrassing, I'm supposed to be a music nerd. Whoops. You can't jump, and uh, your top speed isn't quite enough in this version of the game to make it over that ramp. So you have to crash into the other side. Do a little 
point blank special. Uh, accidental rear fire of weapon. Oh, no upgrade point. That's odd. A lot of odd things occurring right now. But we're almost done with this level anyway. Oddities or no. Mr. Slam's good and dead. Axel will be joining him shortly. Once his invincibility wears off. Hey, there's a special weapon upgrade. And no special weapon to use it. Got a few fire missiles, and we're good. I didn't even die. Didn't even need to reload my save. On to the first boss. This is where uh, we have seen Shadow before in all of his glory. It's kind of an unfortunate place to uh, have our fully upgraded special because it will be virtually useless as demonstrated in the LP. But it should default us to our special, which I can then immediately fire, get a ton of damage. Hit all the ATVs at once. And I'm still getting no music. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I will end up reloading my save after all. But we'll see how I fare on this boss fight. And also I didn't save after completing the last level, so not even an option at the moment. There's one ATV down. They have virtually no HP, so it is quite easy. More upgrade points. Fairly useless because we're fully upgraded. We just get bonus weapons each time. <laughs> oh, what's that guy's name? The uh, the evil Knievel ripoff character. Whatever his name is, it is funny to watch his corpse roll around. Twenty-five points of damage up from like seventeen. With an unupgraded special. He's gonna go for a health refill as soon as he's able. We gotta make sure he is not able. They're all good and dead. Now listen closely to not hear Cousin Eddie. There he is. Dead silent. He's supposed to have a voice clip there. I don't know if it's glitched or what. Clearly there are a lot of sound glitches in uh, this version of the game. Like, I think this is a phenomenal Twisted Metal game, the extra Twisted Edition here. It is quite glitchy. And I mean, it came out in 2008. That is a absurd time to be releasing a uh, PS2 game. So they probably had to rush this thing out the door. Might not have been all the way finished. Don't want to use any further napalms, they're just good for taking out the, uh, the guy on top. I believe up, down, up will be the free shot, which is exactly what I need right now. Yep. Hit miss, though. One more hillbilly down, and one more remains. Let's see if I can get the full health refill. I couldn't do that in the LP. Because it's actually kind of difficult. See? <laughs> Not off to a great start. We gotta do some platforming across this bridge. This broken bridge. There it is. We did it. 
truly worth the revisit. Uh, did I get him? Nope, rear guy is all that remains, so let's snipe him and uh, blow myself up quite embarrassingly and get ready to get destroyed. Yeah, the timing on that was not to my advantage. Didn't think that through very well. We can use the upgraded special now that he has no hillbilly shield. And he is good and dead. Let us uh, save and quit. See if that restores the music, because if not, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might have to restart the whole console. Something ridiculous like that. If I hear that horrible blaring guitar on the title screen, I'll know that we're in a better situation. Honestly, that doesn't actually mean anything, but hopefully it bodes well. On to the latter half of the game, the Roman Ruins. I actually am going to do the, uh, the secret, what is it called, bonus mission? The minigame. There's a soundtrack. Very good. I should point out, this mural back here looks like crap. It looks really, really bad. Um, that is compared to the PSP version. I think they made this uh, level brighter in the Extra Twisted Edition. And the colors on this, this mural back here are all washed out. They look just really, really bad. And, uh, it's kind of unfortunate. The PSP version actually looks better in only that way. Overall, this version of the game does look much better than uh, the original. When your machine guns are upgraded, I believe they overheat much faster. So you basically have the same damage output, just firing much, much faster. Which ultimately makes it more useful, because you're not going to have enemies in your sights for extended periods of time. Realistically. I'm going to go for the full health refill, which is underground. This teleporter should get us there. And there it is. Just at the exact moment that I needed it. Someone joined us. Could murder them before any of us leaves. Now while it gets pretty significant advantage from this close proximity. Keep running right into the uh, remote bombs. They have a huge blast radius and they always do max damage. So that's a big problem. The AI has a real easy time using them. Which is another improvement over Twisted Metal 3. I'm gonna point it out when I do the next Twisted Metal 3 video, but. The AI in that game loves to drop remote bombs, and it does not have the programming to explode the remote bombs on its own. So they are basically just uh, proximity mines in that version of the game. Proximity mines that do a lot of damage. I just remembered how to do the invincibility move. Get rid of Outlaw. Hopefully survive long enough to get a health refill, which this is not. The red coloration tricked me. 
and you will hopefully note that uh, I have improved my uh, syncing for the commentary in this video. When I did Twist the Metal Black, that was a bit of a problem throughout that video. The problem is caused by the fact that my computer is a decade old and even skips while recording just commentary. Just Audacity occasionally skips and will eat about half a second of commentary. And it'll do that once roughly every 15 to 20 minutes. Completely at random. Uh, and there's no real way to know where that has occurred if it happened during silence. And if it happened while I was speaking, it, it'll still be really hard to find, so... That's gonna cause gradual desync throughout all my live commentated videos. Anyway, top-down driver. We have one and a half minutes because we are on hard difficulty. When I did the uh, Let's Play, I showed this specific minigame off on uh, normal difficulty because on hard difficulty it is impossible to the best of my knowledge. I mean, maybe I'll get through this in a minute and a half, but I've never done so with any vehicle, no matter how fast. They just scale the difficulty uh, numerically, so they just knocked 30 seconds off of your time limit with each uh, increase in difficulty. I don't think they play-tested whether that increase will make the resulting level completable or not. So, to the best of my understanding, we will not be getting any bonus of any sort by completing this. We will get to keep the weapons that we picked up, which is going to result in us having an obscene number of weapons. In fact, I think my weapons bay was already close to full. I don't know how that's going to work. Maybe it'll overfill my weapons bay. That would be interesting. But I doubt it. Some of these you don't actually have to jump, but most of them you do. Or else you fall and die. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I honestly wasn't paying attention to the time limit there, but... I believe the recording will prove that it was over one and a half minutes. Couldn't have done much better with Shadow. Never been able to do better with any vehicle. Not Crimson Fury or Spectre. It's simply impossible. But I did want to show off what a minigame looks like when you play it in context of an actual level. That was a nice, short, easy minigame to show off. Not a very interesting one, but short and easy. S Twister here should be good and screwed. And indeed. There she goes. Level over. Let us continue. Let's see, Russia or Greece? Neither is going to recur in uh, our next Twisted Metal 3 video, but I prefer the Russia level. I believe I said in the LP that the Grease level is more fun, which is uh, pretty accurate. But the Russia level is also very fun. These are two very good levels. Grasshopper stuck against the wall. And she is notably weaker than uh, most of the other cars in this uh, game, so. Uh, I think Spectre whiffed with that missile. Right? That's, that's probably what was happening there. I think that's what that targeting reticle is uh, indicative of. Spectre's special. Anyway, 
Let's make this level dramatically more accessible. I fired missiles all over the place. Blowing up uh, a cathedral. St. Basil's, if I'm recalling correctly. Which I very easily could not be recalling correctly. I didn't know the name of it when I did the, when I did the LP, so... Uh, why start now? I will absolutely never be able to shake the uh, similarities to the Moscow level of Tony Hawk's Underground, though. Which I love. Tony Hawk's Underground, very good game. I wish I had made that my brand, Tony Hawk's LPs. Because those games are fun as hell. Twisted Metal games are also fun as hell. Uh, pound for pound, Twisted Metal games are probably better than Tony Hawk games. Because there's way, way more Tony Hawk games and like half of them are total garbage. Not really two series you can reasonably compare sort of apples to oranges, but uh, two series that I love immensely. It's quite an investment to take down the entire Tony Hawk series, though. Few have tried. Even fewer have survived that attempt. Who is spinning around me here? Crimson Fury, I could really wreck his day. Because he's got very low armor. Our special goes through walls. Let's see if I can show... Yeah, like our special will just fly off into oblivion. I can't change my weapons right now. I can't do anything because our special was still flying off forever. It did eventually blow up on its own. It took like 10 seconds. Of it just flying off into the void. The out of bounds area that our vehicles can never go to. I need to get on top of the wall. Because that is where the full health refill is. I believe I can do so not from here. Huh. Why did I blow up those towers? If it didn't grant me access to the wall. Weird. Um, getting up there is going to be a nightmare from here. And at this point, it's easier to just take the teleporter, go across the other set of towers that I knocked down. This will get us to the wall. And this wall specifically is the thing I remember best from Tony Hawk's Underground. Because I played that game on sick difficulty, and they make you grind across the entire wall in order to complete that level on sick difficulty. It's one of the hardest missions in the entire game. Only the final mission is harder. And I got stuck on that mission for months. It's that difficult. Very satisfying to ultimately complete it. Not quite as satisfying, as satisfying as completing the final mission, where you uh, punch your rival in his goddamn smug face after he stole your tape. That guy is one of the greatest uh, video game villains of all time. For the most mundane reasons. Uh, I probably shouldn't turn this into a Tony Hawk's Underground LP as much as I would clearly like to do. Let's talk some more about this game. Monaco is an interesting level. Mostly because the, the traffic is going to eat like half of our missiles. It's actually really difficult to fight enemies out on the main drag of the race course. Kind of have to avoid it. Uh, 
Yeah, I had to backfire my special there because no enemies were around me. That never happens in this game. Even though you only top out at five enemies at a time. Which is quite low for a Twisted Metal game. Even Twisted Metal 2, I think, had uh, the the Neverlands level. The, geez, Netherlands. Uh, where you fight like nine enemies at once. This game, never more than five, except in the bonus mission, where you play as Tower Tooth. Whoa. What got me there? Takes a lot to uh, one-hit kill Shadow like that. Not sure what happened. Um, this fountain here looks really bad. You can sort of tell that it's moving when you get close to it, but otherwise it looks like an ice statue. Into the slot machines. Oh, I don't have my upgraded special, so I tried to charge it. And wasted it there. This part's always fun, though. Probably the best destructible in the entire game. They didn't have you blowing up a lot of buildings back in 2005, but uh, nothing stops Twisted Metal from their building devastation. No amount of terror acts or uh, horrible illegal wars against them can stop Twisted Metal from its edgelord nature and its beautiful destruction of unsuspecting innocent environments. This is really one of the least edgy Twisted Metal games, but uh, just the fundamental concept of Twisted Metal still very edgy. And of course, this is the follow-up to Twisted Metal Small Brawl, which is by far the least edgy of the Twisted Metal games. Although it does have a censored ending in that game. An ending that was too edgy for players to see. Partially because I believe it was an E-rated game. So, the threshold was very low. But when I get to that LP, I will talk about that ending more. Yes, I will be LPing Twisted Metal Small Brawl against my better judgment. Not that it's a bad Twisted Metal game, but it's certainly a weird one. I think that guy took environmental damage there. That guy being Grasshopper, one of the few non-guys in this game. But, dead now. Not gonna get her weird ending, <laughs> where she sort of time travels, and also comes back to life, and also is in a coma. And no one really knows what was going on or why. Overall, this game sort of lacked vision. Overall. I said overall twice in that sense, because it is so lacking. One of the reasons I chose Shadow here, because I like Shadow as a vehicle, and you don't get many opportunities to drive it, and because uh, Shadow's ending is a total non sequitur, completely meaningless, and very hilarious and fun. Oh, there was a health upgrade right there. Damn it. So I guess I'll be going into the next level with no upgrades whatsoever. But I will be going into the next level fairly soon if I don't uh, dive into the water too many times. Ugh. I hate getting frozen. I mean, you sort of have to have the freeze in these games because they're so hectic and fast-paced. Half the weapons would be almost completely useless if you didn't freeze your opponents first. At least on the higher difficulties. 
And I am playing on hard difficulty right now. Just because this is one of the easier games in the series. Even hard difficulty is pretty manageable. Gotta have my jump upgrade. You actually sort of do. Half the platforming in this game is actually impossible if you don't have the jump upgrade. Axel running away for some reason. It's like he knows he's the last enemy. I think I almost flipped him into the water. Not quite though. Got that all wrapped up. Now I will save, quit to menu, get my cars refilled, my extra lives. Bit tedious to have to go through these loading screens unnecessarily like this. But uh, overall, less tedious than playing the PSP version, so it is a net gain. But we are going to Transylvania, which we would get to skip entirely because it is not in the PSP version. That said, it's an excellent level. I'm gonna have quite a lot of fun going through it. Maybe luring enemies into the only instant death trap in the entire game. And enjoying some of the best music tracks, which are supposed to play during the final boss fight. Get dead outlaw. Give me some kind of upgrade. Thank you. And... Everyone is behind me right now. I think they're mostly in the castle. They only give you four opponents in this level? Maybe one of the enemies uh, killed themselves already. Because it'd be weird if they only gave you four total. Pretty sure every level gives you five. Uh-oh. That's not good. Yeah, that's really not good. Environmental damage, not an instant kill, except for the one trap in this level, but uh, does I think a quarter of your health, your, your max health, so you're not going to survive too long if you don't get a health pickup soon afterwards. Another dead enemy there, Thumper, totally useless in this game. Mostly because the special is severely downgraded from previous Twisted Metals. When I replay one of those games, I definitely have to start with Thumper, because Thumper has been wildly underserved in my overall LPs. Thumper is an excellent car, and one of the most prevalent ones throughout the series. And I almost never show it off. I f oh, that's right. There is no full health refill in this level. There's only three small health refills. That is a rude awakening. Pretty much got all the health refills now. There's so few enemies overall. We should be fine. Maybe we could lure the final enemy here into killing herself. Nope. Maybe? No. Almost. We'd miss Vampire's Teeth if I did that. Probably the best song in this entire soundtrack. We're not gonna get to hear the drop. But we got to hear enough of it. 
Uh, I'm going to save just in case, but I'm not going to quit to the title screen, even though I don't have full cars. We're just going to keep on rolling. Try our luck in Tokyo, which is a level that did appear in Twisted Metal 3. So this is the head-on version. One of two Tokyo levels here in head-on. Definitely won't be two in Twisted Metal 3. Someone just jumped off that bridge somehow. Didn't even know that was possible. And they keep on doing it. They don't appear to be taking damage. Maybe they're glitched. Maybe this uh, level won't be completable. This game is very prone to uh, getting itself into an uncompletable state. It happens a lot, especially in Twisted Metal Lost, the bonus game that's on the disc. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to kill this enemy. Hopefully they just keep uh, accruing damage. It looks like they did. I believe that was Axel, and they appear to be dead. Through no action of my own. Just bouncing up and down, and Oblivion has killed them. Although, come to think of it, the fact that my special goes out of bounds means I probably could have still attacked Axel while he was out of bounds. Had the need arised, ar arisen, arose by any other name, would smell as sweet. Um, Napalm myself, always a very bad idea. Ultimately worked out though. Should probably take down this radio tower. Even though there's only two enemies left, won't be in this level much longer. But it's a good destructible. Not quite as good as the Eiffel Tower, but comparable. Ooh, one of the enemies is Mr. Grimm, who once again tricked me into driving right into a remote bomb. Ah, that was just a, uh, Random NPC vehicle that it was blowing up there. Thought maybe somehow I'd killed Grim. Oh, he's tricked me into running right into a rope bomb again. Uh, the AI has outsmarted me. Oh, why is my health bay full? I guess I just picked up the health upgrade without realizing it. And I think the... Okay, good. The enemies did not go to the dojo. It is kind of a pain in the ass to get him out of there. Oh, Crimson Fury. I wanted Grim. Grim's getting away. Down the highway here. I got him. I think all we have left is the special weapon upgrade? Let's see. Hell yeah. We are fully upgraded. Time to do some damage. Just in time for the second to last level. And hopefully we can uh, keep them all as we get to the final boss. We won't get to keep them through the final boss because the final boss is really hard. There we go. Take our full retinue of weapons. Onto the Tokyo rooftops. Oh, I still haven't saved. This is uh, tempting fate. But we should be good. This is a very small, short level. But it can go horribly, horribly awry. So hopefully it doesn't. Gonna want to kill that uh, you. There we go. 
rammed her to death. <laughs> Always very satisfying. Grim, I think, oh no, Crimson Fury. Got the wrong shade of red. But Grim is here. Not anymore. <laughs> That's how powerful the napalms are in this game. I feel like I killed Grim with just two of them there. Maybe that's what happened to me when I was at, like, half health and died earlier in this playthrough. You can blow up all the little letters that I can't read. Maybe they spell something fun. For some reason, they really only did, uh... hilarious jokes when you blow up a, uh, a billboard and make its letters change to a different meaning in, uh, the Twisted Metal remake. You'd think they would do that more. Because that's, that's a classic comedy trope. Where you, like, drive through a billboard and you change the, the lettering. So it says something offensive. Damn, I'm gonna go into the final boss with practically no upgrades now. Also, when they did that in the Twisted Metal remake, they mostly did a bad job. The jokes were not very funny. That's the Twisted Metal remake in a nutshell. Couldn't really decide if it wanted to be funny, or scary, or just gross. Most of the time it settled on being just gross. But my thoughts on that game are well recorded. And I don't think I'll be re revisiting that game. Because a full playthrough takes like six hours. Hopefully this recording doesn't take six hours. I can't imagine it would though. <laughs> I was just hammering the fire button there, and, uh, I accidentally landed on the, um, remote bombs, but my health was too low to survive a remote bombing. But also, I didn't save the game before going into this, so I am at the mercy of, uh, replaying the level. Which mercifully starts me off with the same number of lives that I uh, started this level with. I kind of thought it would start me off with zero extra lives. Uh-oh. Twister is a very bad enemy to have here. I am very lucky I did not get thrown off the edge there. But I gotta kill Twister fast. You are not Twister. But I will kill you anyway. See? I killed ya. That was for all my Giant of the Homicidal Maniac fans out there. It's one of the most famous panels from Giant of the Homicidal Maniac. A thing that I haven't referenced since high school. Actually, I referenced it uh, when I played through uh, Nightmare Creatures 2. I didn't expect this video to turn into a greatest hits of all my past recordings, but uh, that seems to have happened. My bad. My sincere apologies to anyone who uh, is watching this right now. <laughs> Mr. Grimm very nearly sniped my full health refill that I desperately needed. Quite glad he failed to do that. Jump upgrade. Yeesh. I'm gonna have like maybe four upgrades when I go into the final boss, if I'm lucky. Gonna have to make do. There's old Mr. Grim. Technically more edgy than uh, Shadow, but uh. Kind of splitting hairs there. Pretty sure you can shield falling damage. 
Hopefully I don't have to find out. But if it comes to that, I should be okay. In the hell out of there. To the nearest health refill. Which I thought was down here. Apparently not. Doubt this one has respawned. Yeah. I could get one by going through the, the mini game, which would also give me a extra life. But it would be fairly tedious. Probably better off just trying my luck against these last two enemies. As long as I don't blow myself up again, I should be fine. These towers literally cannot be knocked down with machine gun fire in this version of the game. In the PSP version, you can shoot them down just fine. Kinda wish I could play through the PSP version in its entirety in one of these bonus videos. Because that would be worth doing. However, the emulated PSP version has a sound glitch. If you watch most recordings of Twisted Metal Head On on YouTube, you will notice that there are very few sound effects playing. Because they simply do not play on the emulated version of Head On. And most people uh, choose to play the emulated version for some reason. Mostly because the, uh, the console version is quite hard to uh, actually get a hold of and play reliably and record. Best way to do it is to use a console called the um, PSTV. Unfortunately, no one has that console. In America, it was discontinued very, very quickly. So, used uh, PSTVs cost like 200 bucks, if you're lucky. Um, in other countries, it was actually fairly popular. And PSTVs can be acquired very cheaply, as is my understanding. So they are very common for speedrunners to pick them up because in many cases it is the best version of many PS1 games for speedrunning purposes. But in the US we do not have that luxury, as we do not have many luxuries. Uh-oh, I just lost the level again, because Mr. Grimm froze me and murdered me. Gonna have to play a little more carefully this time. And hopefully I see Twister on the map already. Damn it all. So we'll just focus her down. She's avoiding me. She knows my plan. You know, just like uh, the rooftops level of Twisted Metal Black having a real hard time. This one is uh, not one of the hardest levels in the game, so I shouldn't be having a hard time. But uh, you don't get to decide when you're having a hard time. It just happens to you. You gotta play the hand you're dealt. Need to collect more weapons. Then we can hopefully grab an upgrade or two. Get ready to get wrecked by the final boss. Ugh. And, uh, pretty sure the shield did not protect me there. From falling off the building. Therefore, Twister's gotta go. Don't really care about you, Thumper. You can spew all the fire you want green though it may be. Guess I already got the full health refill. That's not good. The 
partial health refill is on the other building. Mr. Grimm continuing to be a pain in the ass. Someone just fell off the building. Fortunately, not me this time. There's Twister. I can face her relatively safely here. She's not going to throw me off the building, at least. She's going to freeze me. Then do God knows what. Yeah, this is an exceptionally bad run. Thus far. Yeesh. First one dead. So I stand virtually no chance this time. And I don't even have the jump upgrade to kill myself. Rude. <laughs> Ah, uh, well. Don't have the firepower to take down uh, Warthog. So I thought. I was right. He stole the health refill. And uh, didn't die from damage. So he's gonna be just fine. Now he's dead. Didn't even need to kill myself. Mr. Grimm actually had a good strategy and hit me with a special a few times. Okay. This is definitely the run, though, where we get it. Mr. Grimm's back, of course. But it's just Mr. Grimm. We can take Mr. Grimm. The AI is horrible at using him. I think it's giving me the same enemies every time. Which is bad news, because this is... a rough collection of enemies. Just ruined Thumper's day, which is... one of the least effective things I could be doing right now. Thumper being uh, the most minor threat among the enemies here. And they rescued our enemy anyway by absorbing most of my swarm missiles. Ugh. I lost control of my special as soon as I got hit by twisters. And Crimson Fury knew the uh, health refill was going to respawn, so we just stood where it was respawning. Yeah. I almost avoided the... Wow. Wow. The, uh, remote bomb. But I sure didn't. I really screwed myself by coming in with, uh, just one extra life. At this point, it would have been faster to go through the... Minigame. Speaking of faster, though, Twisted Metal speedruns are fairly interesting in that they mostly occur for the bad Twisted Metal games. Twisted Metal 3 and 4 are especially popular because they are quite short. And they have glitches that um, make them very fun to uh, abuse and play through very, very, very quickly. Twisted Metal 4 in particular has an infinite ammunition glitch, which uh, can be very, very powerful. It's actually quite a fun speedrun to watch. The world record is like 
12 minutes for the entire game, thanks to the infinite ammo glitch. Can't put out my fire because I don't have any turbo at the moment. Got Mr. Grimm out of here at least. He has been surprisingly damaging throughout these many attempts at the rooftops. Surprising because normally he's useless. The AI is terrible using Mr. Grimm. But when they freeze you and they hit you with a special, you are uh, ugh, dead. <laughs> Thank you for demonstrating Twister. Twister has like no armor. I can't seem to kill the damn thing. She keeps sneaking up behind me. By the time I realize she's even in the area, I am going off the edge. Not this time. Okay, so it's just two relatively weak, useless enemies. Don't know what hit me there. Probably a remote bomb, or a napalm, I think. Judging by the fire. Crimson Fury, killed like he's nothing. Because he has such poor armor. Damage values are so obscene in this game jump upgrade somehow. I thought I'd picked up multiple upgrades at this point, but apparently not. Warthog dead. Not gonna get to his upgrade in time, but we did finally beat the level. We'll refresh our lives in the main menu again and fight the final boss, Darktooth has very little plot relevance. Yeah, Darktooth was the final boss of Twisted Metal 2 because he was Sweet Tooth's dad. In this game, he's, uh, he's Sweet Tooth. And Marcus Kane at the same time. They never truly explain why. Maybe they were planning to follow this game up with further explanation. Maybe they were planning to uh, not explain things even more in future games. We'll never know. Any future Twisted Metals that ever happen to come out will be in an entirely different continuity. Uh-oh. I forgot that, uh, he's a grabber, this guy. But he's very big. So remote bombs will be pretty effective. Not that effective, though. Yeah, and it's rope bombs and napalms that always do max damage. Thus, they are very useful in this game. Making this a lot easier than the PSP version. However, this final boss is one of the exceptions where the PSP version is definitely easier. Because you get a save point between Dark Tooth and Tower Tooth. Like, after Darktooth dies, you actually get to save the game. Then you move on to the final, final boss. This way is better, having both bosses at the same time. But it is much, much harder. Towertooth is very, very difficult. Particularly the final phase, where you can only shoot the upper head. you're at the mercy of the game itself on whether or not it feels like allowing you to hit that head. Mm. 
never ever get near Tower Tooth. Because all of his most damaging attacks are melee attacks. Sort of like the way Dark Tooth worked in Twisted Metal 2. Probably an intentional reference. Absolutely not an intentional reference. Um, gonna need a lot more weapons. You can take advantage of Tower Two's lack of mobility to give yourself some advantages. At the very least, uh, hide from it. Look at how long that shield lasts, though. Ridiculous. Wish our shield lasted that long. At this point, picking up weapons is just gonna waste them, because... Tarantou's gonna kill me in a second here. I don't think the full health respawned when the level changed. When the, uh... new final boss showed up. Ah, stage one cleared, though. That's why the lightning bolts are occurring and killing me. But I have two more lives to uh, take care of the hard part of this level. My special is uh, utterly useless at this point. Literally cannot harm the boss at all. But Swarm Missile certainly can for 27 points of damage. That wasn't even a full charge, too. Although that was the max damage that would have occurred had I done a full charge. I don't know why. I guess Swarm Missiles are glitched or something to do full damage more often than they oughta. But I've used up all my weapons now. Gotta go find more. Napalm is gonna be pretty hard to use. There's a good one. Home missiles will definitely land. Ricochet is totally useless. Gonna just throw them away. So they aren't in my inventory and I don't accidentally shoot myself with them. Gonna need that fire missile, but... Gonna get the health first. Now, I think he's well below me. Just used a shield and went behind the building. Yeah, swarm missiles are excellent for this fight. Although I think they managed to miss there. So I guess I spoke too soon. Gets invincibility again. What is up with that? Love a boss fight that you just can't play for 20 to 30 seconds at a time. Really more than that, because you have to run away so often. But when the boss is literally invincible for a good 20 seconds of that time, you won't be having a lot of fun. Plus, he picked up a health refill. A lot of those didn't curve enough to hit the boss, and so were wasted. Got a health refill of our own. Hopefully the boss is in a good spot to get hit with a lot of swarm missiles. Nope. A couple swarm missiles. Though they didn't do any damage for some reason. Ugh, oh, and there's the shield again. Excessive shield use kind of ruins this boss. Can't use my special for anything. Just gotta run at this point. Get more weapons. I have no idea why they thought the low health sound was a good idea in this game. It is not. 
Once again, useless ricochets. Get them out of here. There you are. <sighs> Should have known. And the full health hasn't respawned yet, somehow. I honestly have no idea why that has happened. Like, I should definitely be able to get that thing again. Boss is about ready to, uh, use his shield again. Plus, I can't hit him from here. He'll be too high up. And I'm dead. Does mean I get a few more weapons. Pretty sure Tower Tooth just teleported to get into a more advantageous position. Fairly certain he can cheat like that. At will. Need to wait for him to get to a lower part of the street, which he refuses to do. Yep. Homie missiles don't feel like locking onto him right now. And he's getting onto the higher ground where he can't be injured at all. Yeah, this boss is often just more frustrating than difficult. The design is good. The way it works with the mechanics of the game overall can be poor at times. None of those are going to land, for some reason. They all just swerved into walls. I'm starting to feel like the game is uh, in favor of Tower Tooth, for some reason. It's trying to beat me. There you are. Once he gets into the street, he'll probably go invincible. Not fast enough. Finally dead. Knock over that living ice cream store. <laughs> Very silly, but uh, speaking of silly, Shadow's ending. We're probably gonna get to see some skipping. When I recorded these endings for uh, the LP, I'm so I had to record each of them multiple times because this game is prone to just uh, skipping about a second of each cutscene. The worst part of this cutscene is the fact that uh, both of the characters are old men with uh, male pattern baldness. So they look virtually identical. <laughs> Calypso is... Uh, rewarding then, himself. Also, this frame is very sleep. disgusting so <laughs> and doesn't really suit Calypso. Mortimer. So very tired. I see. Well, Mortimer, you are the winner and may claim your prize. Will it be revenge on those who woke you by? Calypso loves revenge. No, Calypso. But Mortimer, I wish to not interested. My slumber, please. Help me go back to sleep. Granted. <laughs> Comfy? Oh, very. Once upon a time, there was a competition called Twisted Metal. There was a very brave driver named Mortimer who sat behind the wheel of the fearsome vehicle Shadow. Mortimer the Champion lived happily ever after. The end. Aw, couldn't ruin that with commentary. And just like Mortimer, we'll be living happily ever after ourselves. Job well done. Another Twisted Metal game completed. For our own amusement. Hopefully. I had fun. It's a fun game. And they don't play the credits. You have to choose the credits from the uh, 
the movie menu. But uh, I think we're done here. We've played enough Twisted Metal for now. And it's bedtime. See you for some other Twisted Metal video, probably.